So I check out a lot of cheap cycle gear. So here's a roundup of a few of the best and worst things from last year that maybe didn't get enough airtime or I just didn't get a chance to show off in other episodes. My name, as always, is Luke and welcome back to Trace Velo. Right then, all of the stuff that I'm showing you today, I've paid for with my own cash. That little paid promotion fly out that some of you might have seen, that pertains only to the Sirocco sponsor segment that I'll have uh, later on in the video. I think when people see it, they assume that I'm, I'm just like constantly shilling all of this stuff, um, uh, which I guess is good to be skeptical, but I, trust me, I have, I've bought all of the cycle gear that I'm showing you here. But anyway, regardless, let's kick it off with some of the best of the rest from last year. So this carbon road bike frame from a brand called OG Ebkin, easily one of the best things that I bought last year. I mean, technically I bought it in late November, 2022, but I didn't ride it until January 23. So I'm gonna sh shoehorn it into this video. The price was absolutely, well, it was bonkers. I got it for 386 quid delivered to my house. And considering what I paid, I wasn't really expecting much, but it, it kind of blew me away. The frame was spotless externally with some really nicely applied decals. And it was the same story inside. Really nice carbon layout with very few creases from what I could see and virtually no signs of excess resin or shoddy craftsmanship. The head tube was really nice and the bottom bracket area had clearly had some additional finishing after coming out of the mold. Just a really tidy frame. It also came with little extras that you don't usually see at this price. A branded headset with some decent bearings, a rubber cover for the seat post clamp, a chainstay protector, and the seat post came with adapters for a regular saddle and oval carbon saddle rails. You usually need to buy these extra adapters on top. So yeah, a really nice touch. It was also an absolute dream to work on and rides really nicely too. It's just a frame with a level of quality and finish that I wasn't expecting at this price. So gravel biking, I've really got into it this year actually. And my setup here, it's one by, so I'm using mountain bike cassettes at the back. That's all well and good, but big 11 to 50 tooth cassettes like this, they're generally heavy and pretty expensive as well. This basic SRAM Eagle 11 to 50 cassette will set you back around 80 quid and weighs 609 grams. For roughly the same price, you can pick up one of these ZTTO cassettes that comes in nearly 200 grams lighter at 419 grams. For an official SRAM cassette in that sort of weight class, you'll need to spend around 300 quid for one of their XG1299 cassettes. This ZTTO one is milled out from a single block of steel and backed by a nice chunky aluminium spider. So I found it to be stiff and durable too. In terms of shifting performance, the SRAM cassette, well, it, it just about has the edge. They're, they're a little more forgiving with your indexing, if that makes sense. You can be like slightly off with the barrel adjuster on the rear derailleur and the SRAM cassette will still shift. But with these ZTTO ones, as long as your derailleur is indexed well and you have the B adjustment screw set properly, you won't have any issues with, with the shifting. I, I certainly haven't. Now, I've bought a couple of these cassettes and I'm really happy with them. For the price and the weight, they're nearly impossible to beat. Now, the basic Shimano SPD pedal that most of you are probably familiar with and, and using is the, well, what's it called? It's the, uh, it's the PD-M520. So it's like 30 quid for the pair. They're completely bulletproof, but they are quite heavy at 380 grams for both. So for the last few months, I've been using these SPD pedals from a brand called Z-Ray. I got my pair for 25 quid including delivery and yeah, they're fantastic. Really nice build quality, chromoly steel axle with some nice rubber seals to keep the water away from the bearings, aluminium pedal body and steel cleat fittings where you can obviously adjust the uh, cleat tension on both sides of the pedal. Plus they come in at around 100 grams lighter compared to those basic Shimano pedals at 285 grams for the pair. Just a great pedal at a really decent price and they come with some extra cleats as well. Winner winner, chicken dinner. Right then, keeping with the gravel bike theme we've uh, got going on in this episode, these uh, well, SPD mountain bike shoes here from a brand called Sidebike, yeah, these have been wicked. 
On my road bike, I've been using these carbon road shoes from Sidebike for around two years. I've done a, a video on them already, and for the price, I, th I think they're fantastic. Sidebike also do SPD mountain bike shoes, so I picked up these early last year, and for the price, yeah, I can't fault them. Maybe not the best looking shoes ever, but they're comfortable and well made with a decent lockdown strap and a clasp. The outer skin is nice and durable with a reinforced toe cap, and on the bottom, you can even remove these two screws and install some additional studs for extra grip on, on crummy trails. Or whatever they're also super easy to clean i just wash them down in the sink actually and because the the materials are used they don't really hold water they drain out and dry super quickly i got my pair for 50 quid delivered but i've definitely seen them for cheaper yeah these things are great i love them Right then, in a previous episode, I showed you these. So these are toe covers from a brand called Gaio, and I really, really rate these things. I think they're wicked. But when it's properly raining outside, which let's face it, this time of year in the UK does, <laughs> does happen quite often, you've got to have full shoe covers. Now, these ones are from a brand called Rock Bros, and yeah, they're fantastic. Truth be told, I've actually had these over three years, and they're great. Slight BDSM vibes, uh, not gonna lie, but I found them to be the only ones that consistently keep the rain out. At the lower end of the cost spectrum for, for shoe covers, you tend to get neoprene ones, sort of made from the same stuff as wetsuits. But in my experience, they don't last, and they really struggle to keep your feet completely dry. These are made from some type of like stretchy plastic or vinyl, so are essentially 100% waterproof without needing any treatment or reconditioning of the material or anything like that. Now, you do have to be a bit careful stretching them over your shoes, but the zip at the back is super chunky, and they have a Kevlar fabric toe box on the bottom here for some added durability. Keeping the wind and rain out of your shoes is one of the keys to enjoying winter cycling, so these are a must-have in my opinion. Last April, I was out on this gravel bike, and this happened. I was wearing this very jacket from today's sponsor, Sirocco. I landed pretty much directly on my back and skidded across the dirt at nearly 20 miles an hour. This is how I looked once I'd limped back home. I was off the bike for a week or two, but the jacket was completely fine. I expected it to have like massive rips in it or something, but all it had were these tiny holes on one side. I've worn this jacket maybe 30, 40 more times since then, and the holes haven't gotten any worse or frayed at all. So yeah, the construction and materials of Sirocco gear is just top tier. I've, <laughs> I've crash tested their stuff a couple times by now, actually, and yeah, I've got a lot of faith in it. They recently revamped this J1 jacket as well. It's got some bigger pockets on the back, plus it's super comfortable, warm, showerproof, and it comes in a bunch of different colors as well. As for bib tights, I'm always wearing these SRX Pros. They're just super warm and comfortable, and the padding is really, really good. But if you want something less expensive, their Black Sea version is really good too. But Sirocco do all sorts of wicked cycle gear, so if you want to check them out, use my link in the description. Save 10% off the entire site which is pretty cool. Um, anyway, enough of that, let's crack on. Right then, first on the chopping block for crap stuff over the last year are these, but not the wheels, actually the tires. So these Sector 28 tires from Hutchinson. Now, these aren't cheap. I paid 35 quid each, so about 70 quid for the pair, and to be frank, they're maybe some of the worst tires I've, I've ever bought. I had a pair of Hutchinson Fusion 5 tires a few years back, and those were decent, but these are dreadful. On paper, the premise for these tires is great, so a softer grade rubber on the edges or the sides for grip, and then a harder compound in the middle for lower rolling resistance and a bit of added durability. Sounds ideal, but in the wet, that harder compound offers virtually no grip. Some of you will know I put out short about these a few days ago because I actually came off the bike using these tires. Unfortunately, I don't film all my rides, so I don't have any footage, but it had rained briefly about an hour before going out, so the tarmac essentially looked like this. Wet on the ground, but no standing water or anything like that. Going around a very shallow corner, the back wheel just slipped out from underneath me. I hit the deck and got a concussion. Yeah, not cool. Now, earlier on in the ride, I did actually feel like something was sort of off 
with the rear wheel. It just it didn't feel planted and was like skating round on the back, or at least that's what it felt like. So I actually pulled over to the side of the road to check if the through axle was loose or, or something like that, but it was all fine. So I just ignored it and then paid the consequences uh, later on as my sort of pasty white body danced, <laughs> danced over over the tarmac, yeah, not fun. And thinking back, I'd also had some issues with them in the summer. So it was on this very ride, actually, back in August, around some Devonshire lanes. Certain back roads in Devon just remain damp throughout the year, even if it's like not raining. And I was out of the saddle on a climb, just like this one, and the back wheel was just slipping a little bit underneath me. I didn't think too much of it at the time, but it was clearly like a, like a portent or an omen. Of, uh, of things to come. I mean, to be frank, even these Lifeline tires that I got from Wiggle for like 12 quid each offer much better grip in the wet. So yeah, I am not impressed with these Hutchinson tires. I might keep them for the summer, but my trust in these has completely gone out the window. In fact, I've already bought the replacements. I got a pair of these Schwalbe One tires the other day. So these are going on pretty much as soon as I finish filming this. So earlier on, I was praising those Z-Ray mountain bike pedals, but the reason I got them was as a replacement for these. Now, I am all about saving weight, and SPD pedals, they're generally quite heavy. So when I came across these ones from a brand called X... Pedo, um, yeah, interesting uh, name there. <laughs> I picked them up because they're, well, they're not crazy money and they only weigh 210 grams for the pair. Now they are single-sided, but that's not the reason I ditched them. They're just so unpredictable when you're clipping out. They're, they're normally fine, but about one in 20 times, just out of the blue, the release mechanism completely locks up and you really have to like wrench your foot out to disengage. When you're not expecting it, yeah, it really throws you off. Now, as it happens, I do have some footage of this actually. So, so I was riding along on the gravel bike and the cleat completely locked up. So I had to hug this nearby tree while I wrenched my foot out. Jesus Christ, there's a tank. In fact, on the same ride, I also came across this really cool guy. He was using a unicycle to uh, go down the, the sort of mountain bike trails and your boy completely stacked it in front of him. So let it never be said, I'm not, oh, sm smooth. That's no, pretty cringe. A unicycle? That's very sick. You have brakes too. Nice. So yeah, if you're, you know, looking to visually present to others around you that you have absolutely no competence on a bicycle, these are the pedals for you. Sold in lad, do you want some lightweight disc rotors yet? Well don't get these ones to crap. Been uh, practicing my scouse there, so <laughs> hope you enjoyed. But anyway, these, these are cheap at about five pound each, nice and lightweight at 85 grams and look cool, but the build quality really lets them down. They're a two-piece rotor with an internal aluminium spider and a floating steel brake surface. The idea being that when the steel heats up under heavy braking, it expands slightly, but as it's a separate piece, it tends to warp less than, than one-piece rotors like these ones. That's all well and good, as long as the rivets hold up. And that's the issue. All right, so just on a little ride um, after work, and it's getting a bit dark, so apologies, but I've noticed something with these, uh, with these disc brakes here. So the back brake, the back disc, still, still nice and solid, no issues with this one, but the front one, have a listen to this. Hear that rattle? So basically, I think one of these rivets, I'm not sure which one, has started to kind of just come loose very slightly. You can't tighten them up. I think on more expensive disc brakes, these are normally threaded, so you can you can tighten them up and tweak them, but you can hear, yeah, a little bit rattly. <laughs> so I'll get back um, and I'll see if I can maybe tighten those up. I'm not sure, but um, still, yeah, a little bit of an issue with these disc brakes. So yeah, one of the rivets came loose after a few hundred miles and the rotor rattles like crazy. I tried to reseat the rivets myself, actually, <laughs> smacking them with a hammer and it worked for another ride or two, but ultimately the issue resurfaced. Plus after another hundred miles, the other rotor suffered exactly the same fate. This style of floating disc rotor, especially the cheap ones are prone to issues like this. So yeah, definite fail with these ones. 
So a little while back, I was testing some CO2 pumps and I picked up this one from uh, AliExpress. It's from that brand Gaio, same as those toe covers. And I've also got a couple pairs of their cycle gloves as well. And I yeah, really rate those. So I was expecting this to be decent. The idea of having a little pressure gauge on the side of a CO2 pump like this was really cool, but it, it didn't work at all. I screwed in a CO2 cartridge and no matter what I did, no air came out. The cartridge was punctured, but there was either a blockage or a straight up manufacturing defect with this thing and it just failed to work. I ended up getting my money back, so not a big deal, but a bit disappointing. Now, in terms of bad products for this year, honorable mentions go to L2 with their, with their electronic group sets. I've had a fair few issues with those. And also Trifox, their X18 frame that they sent me had a couple of issues. But since fixing those myself, I have enjoyed riding it actually, it's quite nice. So I might have to revisit that in, a, in another video. Anyway, um, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the rundown. Hit the like button, subscribe, all, all that juicy goodness. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. It's the bonus clip time. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Right, I've got one more thing I want to show you. And I think it's my best hack or, or bodge from 2023. So a few months back, I needed another one of these computer mounts for a set of integrated handlebars. They mount underneath there. Uh, but I was loath to have to buy another one of these because in the cupboard, I had this one. It's an old carbon one where both of the arms out to the front have snapped. They've not completely snapped off, but hopefully you can see them flexing there. I was pretty confident that I could fix it. So I took a few hours to do just that. Look at this work. Absolutely beautiful. So it was flexing right here and I expertly contoured some brass nails there, wrapped it in cotton and then slathered the whole thing in five minute epoxy. And this thing is rock solid. I am exceptionally proud of this work. It's, um, yeah, frankly, beautiful. I'm going to be remembered for this, for this work, I think. So, um, yeah, there we go. My, my, my best hack or bodge from 2023. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll be accepting nothing but undying praise for this work. Anyway, there we go. Uh, <laughs> see you next time. Ciao.